Hi friends, welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about solids of revolution. And don't worry, they're not as scary as they sound. So a solid of revolution is basically you take one function and you rotate it around an x or y axis and that is going to give you a three-dimensional object. So let's take a look at this problem. Find the volume of a solid that results from rotating y is equal to the square root of x around the x-axis from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to 1. So we have a function, the blue function, y is equal to the square root of x, and these lines here represent the area under this function, and it goes from 0 to 1. Now, if you take this function right here, and you rotate it around the x-axis, you're going to end up with an object, a three-dimensional solid that looks something like this. So this is the solid that we want to find the volume of. So step number one, you need to write down the volume formula. So V is equal to the integral from A to B of A of x dx, where A of x is the area of the cross section. So since the cross section is on the x-axis, it is easier to integrate with respect to x. Now let's find the area of this circular cross section. So the area of a circle is the same as pi times the radius squared. This is the same as pi times the radius, which is the square root of x, to the power of 2. And that will simply be pi times x. Now we successfully found the area function. We can put this back into the integral and that's gonna basically give us the volume of this solid. So let's do that. Now the volume goes from 0 to 1. So that's gonna be the integral from 0 to 1. And this is our area formula. So pi times x dx. And since pi is just a number, we can always bring it outside of the integral. So this is the same as pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of x dx. Now this is something that's very easy to solve. This is the same as pi times the antiderivative of x, which is just 1 over 2 times x to the power of 2. And don't forget the boundaries. So up here is 1, down here is 0. And the final step is just substituting these numbers back into our formula. So this is the same as pi times 1 over 2 times 1 to the power of 2 minus the lower bound, which is 0. So 1 over 2 times 0 to the power of 2. And that's it. So we know that this is going to be 1 over 2. And that's going to be 0. So we're going to have pi times 1 over 2 minus 0, which is just pi over 2. And that is our answer. Now let's do one more example of solids of revolution. Find the volume of a solid that results from rotating the area between y is equal to x, that's going to be the pink function, and y is equal to x squared, that's going to be the blue function, around the x-axis. So basically, what this is saying is that we have the area between these functions, and if we take the function and we rotate it around the x-axis, what kind of solid do we have? Well, it takes a bit of imagination, but the solid is going to look like this. As you can see, this solid is a little bit hard to look at, so what I did was I break it down into smaller steps. So to obtain the volume of this solid, so the volume of this solid, we take the volume of the outside function, which is the pink function, as you can see. So that's the pink function. So the volume of the outside function, and we minus the volume of the inner function. So the volume of the inner function. 
and that will give us the volume of the solid. So the volume of this function, V out, is the same as the integral from 0 to 1, so from 0 to 1, of a of x dx, where a of x is the area of the circular cross-section. So that's what we need to find first. The area of the circular cross-section is going to be pi times the radius to the power of 2. Now, if we take a look at this picture, we know that the radius is from here to here, which is just y. And we also know that y is equal to x. So we can substitute x into the radius. And this is equal to pi times x to the power of 2. The second step is to substitute this back into this integral. So let's go ahead and do that. So the volume of the inner function is the same thing, the integral from 0 to 1. So 0 to 1 of a of x dx, where a of x is the area of this cross-section. So again, the area of a circle is pi times the radius to the power of 2, where the radius is y. And y is equal to x squared. So this is equal to pi times the radius is x squared and to the power of 2. So that will simply be pi times x to the power of 4. And let's substitute this back into the volume formula. So again, the volume of this solid, the one that we're trying to find, is equal to the pink one, which is the volume of the outside function. So the integral from 0 to 1, pi x to the power of 2 dx, minus the volume of the inner function. So that is the integral from 0 to 1 of pi times x to the power of 4 dx, and since both integrals have the same boundaries, we can smash them together into one integral, and that will simplify a lot of things. So this is the same as the integral from 0 to 1 of pi x to the power of 2 minus pi x to the power of 4 dx. And once again, we can take out the pi. Once again, we can substitute out the pi. So this is going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of pi times x to the power of 2 minus x to the power of 4 dx. And since pi is just a number, let's bring it outside of the integral. So again, pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the power of 2 minus x to the power of 4 dx. And this is something that we can easily find. So this is going to be pi times the antiderivative of x squared, which is just 1 over 3 x to the power of 3. And the antiderivative of x to the power of 4, that's going to be x to the power of 5. And you have to divide by that exponent. So divide by 5. And you have to do it from 1 to 0. So don't forget the boundaries, guys. So 1 to 0. Now, the next step is to substitute these numbers into this formula. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me use yellow this time. So pi times this is 1 over 3 times 1 to the power of 3 minus 1 over 5 times 1 to the power of 5 and minus the lower bound, which is 0. So 1 over 3 times 0 to the power of 3 minus 1 over 5 times 0 to the power of 5. And we can close off the expression right there. So we know that 1 over 3 times 1 to the power of 3 is just 1 over 3. So this is going to be pi times 1 over 3 itself. And negative 1 over 5 times 1 to the power of 5 is just negative 1 over 5. 
And we also know that whatever is here, since there's a zero, we know that this whole expression right there is going to be zero. So this is simply minus zero. And all we need to do is solve the fractions. So this is pi times, this is going to be 5 over 15, minus 3 over 15. And finally, the answer is 2 times pi over 15. So this right here is the answer and also the volume of the solid of revolution.